Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole and welcome to today's haul follow-up speed reviews whatever you want to call it in today's video I am following up with you all on products that you requested more about at least that's the deal for the most part in today's video I am also throwing in a few products that you either requested or highly recommended it's not a huge video today but hopefully it's a helpful video because I've got some thoughts as always, timestamps and links are in the description box below, and my skin type is dry and acne prone and a little sensitive. I've also been having a breakout again. It's been a while. I hate to admit it, but I said I was going to try more Western brands. I started trying more Western brands, and I just immediately remembered, oh yeah. K-Beauty and J-Beauty are a lot more gentle. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into it. Oh, by the way, I bought everything in this video except for the first product. This was in the Style Vana Advent Calendar, and I'm ready to talk about it. It's the VT Cosmetics Riedel Shot 100, and let me tell you a true story. A few days ago, I thought I was going to come on camera and tell you all about how much I do not like this product. <laughs> but you all know, you all know that I am not somebody who likes to just be defeated by a product, especially one where a lot of people have asked me to try it. And now I feel like I have kind of a lot to say. So first things first, this is a product that promises to be an alternative to microneedling in a skincare product. What? <laughs> What on earth? And the way they're doing this is with that hydrolyzed sponge ingredient in there that's referring to spicules. And that is basically a sponge skeleton. Oh, that is perfect for spooky season. It's a naturally occurring needle-like part of a sponge that apparently a lot of K-beauty companies have realized if we put that into a skincare product, it does kind of feel like microneedling. And you see, my dear friends, that is exactly what I was not loving about this product at first. The first few times that I tried this, it was sheer pain. It is not comfortable for me to apply this product, or at least it wasn't. I figured out, I figured out that rather than kind of massaging this across my skin, it does help to tap it. As a general rule, I don't find there to be a big difference in terms of whether you tap your skincare in or whether you rub your skincare in. I know sometimes it's a hot debate, but I don't think there's a big difference. Except for with this, there are always exceptions. <laughs> but listen, if we are going to talk about a product that claims to be microneedling in a skincare product, we also have to talk about... Does that mean you're going to have the same safety precautions with this product that you would for microneedling? And my theory is yes, you should probably err on the side of caution, you know, don't use this before you use other actives. And that's another reason why I wasn't really loving this. I'm somebody who needs a lot of actives in my skincare routine. And if I'm essentially microneedling in my skincare products, I sure do not want to follow with something like my adapalene. And I actually found quite an interesting study that I'll link in the description box below. So get this, this study was looking at the effects of these spicules on wrinkles. But not just on its own, what they did is they had a split face trial where they gave half of the participants EGF, epidermal growth factors, and the other half were given EGF plus these spicules. And can I please say I found it very interesting, very interesting that the EGF group alone didn't have a significant improvement in wrinkles. Both groups did have an improvement in skin density, but the EGF plus spicules group did have a significant improvement against wrinkles, suggesting that this actually may be an alternative to microneedling. So I think this is all to tell you, I'm not gonna just write this product off. I don't necessarily love the way it feels and the restrictions that I have. You know, it really has to be used for me in a simple routine and I don't do a simple routine every day. So I don't love the way that I have to use this, but I also don't wanna write it off because it does sound like there may be some potential. I do wanna make sure to stress that it does seem you would also need to be careful in the same way you would with any type of microneedling. 
Let's talk next about some products that I am very, very impressed with. Starting with uh, this Numbazen number one sunscreen. I had so many people ask me to review this, so many people highly recommending this, and I see why. I think the best introduction that I can give of this product is that the very first time I tried this, I immediately was over here going, Skin 1004 who? This to me feels like an even more elevated Skin 1004 water fit sunscreen. Look at that. It just vanishes into your skin. This is truly a sunscreen that does not feel like sunscreen. And the reason this is so exciting is because while there have been a few sunscreens like that, they've never been a sunscreen that is free of alcohol. Somehow, this glorious, cosmetically elegant sunscreen is alcohol-free, it is fragrance-free, it is the perfect packaging. This does not have a white cast as you're applying it. No, it just sinks into your skin and disappears, possibly because it doesn't have that Tinnosorb M ingredient. It is an SPF of 50+, plus, PA4+, plus, wears beautifully under makeup, is this the Mary Poppins of sunscreens? Is it practically perfect in every way? To be honest with you, as I was looking through the ingredients, the only potential drawback that I felt there is with this sunscreen is that it does have a lot of ingredients, a lot of plant-based ingredients, and the reality is that doesn't work for everybody. Some people do need a more simple ingredients list, which is why at the same time, I wanna to talk to you about this Pea Calm sunscreen. This one came highly recommended to me. It is their Water Barrier Sun Cream, SPF 50 plus, PA 4 plus. And listen, I could not help but notice, do you see the similarities between the ingredients list on this and on the Numbuzzin sunscreen? Because I do except this has fewer of those plant-based ingredients, more of a simple formula overall. So is it similar? It absolutely is. Just like the Numbuzzin, this one just disappears into your skin. No added alcohol, no fragrance, just vanishes. It does seem to have a little bit of a white cast initially. I think that might be why Numbuzzin added the green tint to theirs, but you still see it does, it does disappear into your skin. So I guess I would say the Pea Calm, it might be slightly more moisturizing, so you might even like this more if you have a drier skin type, but they're both very similar, and I think that makes sense because they are using the exact same filter profile. By the way, for those of you who care about who manufactured these, this one, the Pea Calm, is manufactured by Colmar. I'm not sure on the Numbuzzin, it's not on the box. But both of these do feel very similar and it feels like Colmar might actually be in the next generation of sunscreens. The last generation was good. Look at this generation. And speaking of numbers in, I do want to talk about a product that has been recommended to me since my original numbers in video. I am hoping I'm saying that brand name correctly. I have sat over here trying for so long. <laughs> This is the Pure Full Calming Herb Toner. I actually bought the mini size of this, but to give you an idea of how confusing packaging can be, both of these have the exact same volume to them, 3.38 fluid ounces. It's just that K-Beauty brands seem to be a whole lot more generous with the sizes of their toners. Our Western Toner Minis are one fluid ounce. How stunning is the ingredients list on this product, and they also disclose the percentages of their extracts. So we have Sika, we have heart leaf, we have licorice, we have lotus flower extract, and with some panthenol, with some arginine, a very simple ingredients list overall, but perfect for my skin type, and my skin loves all of those ingredients. So it's no surprise that my skin loves this toner, and I'm so glad because we did not do well with the number three toner over here, but we did find our toner from this same brand. I do wanna tell you about its consistency, which at the same time, I wanna share with you some cotton pads that I bought from YesStyle. These are actually, it says it's Shiseido. It, it says Shiseido on the website as well, but I don't see that on the packaging. 
They're such nice toner pads. They actually have a slot in the back so you can stick your fingers in and have excellent control over applying your toner. And it works really well with this toner because it's a bit more of a watery consistency. But it does leave your skin feeling so hydrated. It feels soothing, which is exactly what I expect. Sika, as well as Heartleaf, typically leave my skin feeling much more soothed as well as hydrated. So this is a great match for me for kind of more of an everyday toner, just gentle, calming, soothing, hydrating. Let's chat about double cleansing next. We'll start with the B-Lab Sika Barrier 5.5 Cleansing Oil Balm. Might I confess to you, I went into this as a skeptic. I've tried quite a few of these cleansing balm in a tube systems, and, and here's how they've all been up to this point at least. They're all okay. They're never quite as good as a cleansing balm in a tub. But you know, not everyone wants a cleansing balm in a tub because then you gotta find a scoop, the whole ordeal. And so I've wanted these to be better, but I've just kind of accepted they wouldn't be. I feel like B-Lab has just shocked me with this product because I have no complaints. I have no complaints with this cleansing balm in a tube. It feels exactly like you're using a cleansing balm in a tub. This gets into every trace of makeup and removes it beautifully. It does emulsify. I will give a disclaimer that I am very bad about catching this on camera. Some things just don't look the same in real life as on camera and emulsification is hard to capture. <laughs> So don't mind how soaked I look. It takes a lot of water to show it on camera. But yes, this does emulsify beautifully. It doesn't leave behind too much of a film. I would say your skin does kind of feel it, but once you come in with your double cleanse, no problem from there. Your skin feels clean. You got off all your makeup, all of your sunscreen. It is really well done. I think the only comment that I would personally make is that I do tend to like fragrance in the cleansing balm step just because my skin can tolerate it. I know not everyone can, so that's actually a pro that this is a fully fragrance-free product for a lot of people. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's incredibly well done. This is the best cleansing balm in a tube that I've ever tried. Leave it to K-Beauty, leave it to K-Beauty. And I'm finally ready I think, to follow up on the Onion New Pair Cleansing Foam True Story in the speed reviews. I always have more products out that I think I'll talk about than I finally do talk about. This one has been delayed for at least two speed reviews. And I'll just really quickly tell you why. As somebody with a dry skin type, it is hard for me to review cleansing foams. I get a lot of requests to, but it's hard for me, especially since I already use my benzoyl peroxide cleanser several times a week. That's already drying out my skin. CeraVe tries to offset the dryness, but benzoyl peroxide is a drying ingredient. So basically, I can use this kind of product a handful of times each week. But you know, I figured out some things to make this easier for me, and I think just better for everyone, including to use a tiny amount of it, foam it off your hands and that does apply with this as well now here's the thing i think that this is my personal favorite cleansing foam that i've ever tried at least from k beauty brands there is something about this that makes it feel less harsh less stripping i feel like i'm not ultimately too surprised by this because i love the eccentry onion new pair collection and it turns out i even like the cleanser there is but one thing that I think you should know with this, and that is, this is fragrance free, but it has a strange smell to it, and I, I don't know how to describe it. As I've said before, one of my biggest weaknesses is that I do not know how to describe scents. I don't. <laughs> a truth about the universe. Everybody has weaknesses, yes. Even those people who like to say on a job interview when asked, what is your weakness? Oh, my weakness is I work too hard. Y'all are so full of spicules. I do like this. It has some kind of a smell to it. If you have tried this, feel free to explain the scent in the comment section below. M maybe you can do it much better than I can. <laughs> And that brings us to our final product for today's video, which is the Naturi Hadomugi 
skin conditioning milk. When I hauled this, some of you were so excited about me trying this, and now I see why. So let me first say, when I put these ingredients up, some of you might be thinking, that's it? That, that's it? <laughs> So I do want to acknowledge that this might look like a boring product for some people. Yeah, I'll say it, but I don't actually think it is. In fact, I think that some of these uh, products that look more basic, sometimes those are the perfect fit in a skincare routine. And frankly, that's how I feel about this. So let's talk about the name. The name Hadamugi is referring to the ingredient that I have in bold. That's one of those ingredients that has a lot of different names. I tend to call it Job's Tears, probably because I grew up Fundy. We all know Job. We know Job in the Fundy world, that poor man. And that's an ingredient that is going to give you antioxidant properties as well as some vitamin B3. Now, when you have it in this formula, what you have is essentially an emulsion, which is kind of a, a bit of a more lightweight moisturizer, but I will say, as far as emulsions go, this does have a little bit more body to it, so if you have a more oily skin type, one layer of this might be the perfect moisturizer for you. Yes, in a world that has gel moisturizers, this still could absolutely be perfect for oily skin types. And if you have a drier skin type, you can actually go in with another layer of this. It actually layers really nicely. So again, it's simple, but the simplicity is why this is such a nice product, in addition to the fact that this bottle is almost eight fluid ounces. This is a gigantic bottle. Talk about stretching your dollar. I bought this one from Stylevana for I think about $10. If I understand correctly, if you live in Japan, this is even less expensive. So yeah, simple, but incredibly affordable and a very nice moisturizer. And my friends, that brings us to the end of today's speed reviews. As always, let me know your thoughts. Feel free to make any requests or recommendations. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you all next time.